Good morning and welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting for the Board of Public Works today, Friday, February 25th, 2022. Dr. Campos? Good morning, everyone. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer, establishing roll call and quorum for this morning. We have Vice President Garcia, President Pro Tem Davis, Commissioners Coloza and Viegas. Madam Chair, you do have a quorum at this time. Currently, we do not have, I'm sorry, currently we do have one caller on the line under general public comment. We also have callers on the line for items number one and three. In addition to that, we did receive uh, public comments through our online public co comment portal for general public comment and item number three as well. Those comments were distributed to all commissioners this morning and you should have those in your in basket this morning. Uh, just a special note for item number three, we did receive a letter of notification from the Pico Union Neighborhood Council uh, a section on item number three. So therefore, we're going to enter that commentary under the neighborhood council comment section. So again, Madam Chair, one person for general public comment, one person for item number one, two, three individuals for item number three, and we'll enter the email from the Pico Union Neighborhood Council as the neighborhood council category, under the neighborhood council category. Got it, thank you. Thank you for that, Dr. Campos. Uh, well, let's take public comment now. Absolutely. Uh, we do have one caller on the line. Jamie Hall, if you can please unmute your microphone at this time. The Board of Public Works is taking general public comment. You'll have two minutes to speak under this item, under this category. Um, good morning. My name is Jamie Hall. I uh, am a land use and environmental attorney with Channel Law Group. Um, I am speaking on behalf of Urban Woodland Watch in a uh, pro bono capacity. I'm asking you today to um, reconsider the um, tree removal project for 592 and 594 North Tiger, T Tiger Tail that was on Wednesday's agenda. You may recall that it was not submitted forthwith because of confusion about whether or not Mike Bonin's office actually opposed the project. He did submit a letter yesterday. It says, I write today to oppose the proposed removal of eight oak trees located at 592 to 594 North Tiger Tail Road. I request that the applicant consult with the Community Forest Advisory Committee to address concerns raised by CD11 CAC Representative Isabel. Um, did, I don't know how to say the last name. I apologize. Um, but in order for this project uh, not to move forward, we will need a motion for reconsideration. Um, and then I would ask that this be continued to allow the consultation project with CFAC to occur. I would just note that this is an oak woodland and there are eight mature oak trees being removed. So this is a, a, a big issue, it's significant. Um, and the council office has concerns and there has not been the consultation with CFAC. So um, we would ask that you respect um, these issues and, and take the appropriate action so that further work can be conducted on this. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Hall. All right, moving on, colleagues, we're gonna move on now to the approval of minutes for the meeting of Friday, February 11, 2022. Is there a second to my motion to move this item forward? Second. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Dr. Campos, we have a, a motion by myself and move second by Dr. Davis. Should we take roll call? Yes, we can. We'll go ahead and start with you, Madam Chair. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. Commissioner Coloza? Aye. And Commissioner Villegas? Aye. This motion is adopted and carries unanimous. Madam Chair, can we consider this to go forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, to, uh, Dr. Davis, I'm going to take on Teresa and then I'm, go I'm sending it right after to you. Yeah, whenever you're ready, it's not, okay. a, ru not a rush. No, no, I, I know. I, I do want to get to it because I'm excited to yeah. hear about those great uh, uh, recognitions. Uh, uh, Commissioner Villegas? Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, see if we can just do a reconsideration just on public comment um, for our Wednesday item, the tree removal located at 492 and 494 North Tiger Tail Road. Um, if we could uh, just allow reconsideration um, and allow some time for um, the developer and CFAC to be able to have some time to meet. And I would probably defer also to Dr. Campos and um, to our city attorney just for guidance in terms of if this has to be done in a motion or how does that need to procedurally get done. Got it. Thank you. 
Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. Commissioner Villegas, as stated in Board Rule Chapter Number 5, the Board of Public Works or any commissioner that affirmatively voted on this item can ask for a reconsideration. Just to be very clear on the item that is uh, being requested to be reconsidered, this is item number BPW-2022-0114. This is item number two that was considered by your board on Wednesday, February 22nd, 2022. The tree removal 592 and 594 North Tiger Tail Road in Council District 11. That item was recommending that the board find that uh, that the project is categorically exempt under Article 3, Section 1, Class 3, Category 1, and Class 32 infill of the City's Environmental Quality Act guideline, and there is no substantial evidence the proposed project will have significant effect on the environment and is in compliance with the environmental, the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA. Number two, find that none of the exceptions to the use of the categorical exemption as set forth in section 15300.2 of state CEQA guidelines apply. Recommendation three, specify that the Bureau of Street Services Urban Forestry Division located at 1149 South Broadway is the custodian of record or other materials that constitute the record of proceedings upon which the board's decision is based. And recommendation number four, review and approve the request for a fee permit to remove eight coast live oak trees, tree replacements are required. Again, this is the item that is being uh, requested to be reconsidered under chapter five of the board rules. Any member that affirmatively voted on this item can make a motion to reconsider this item. Commissioner Villegas, if you'd like to make a motion, we can go ahead and consider that. This is not debatable. It will require a vote, an immediate vote by the, the board to take action on that motion. If three or more members of affirmatively approve that motion, then that item will be reconsidered and put back on the docket for your consideration. Commissioner Villegas, at this time, would you like to uh, consider this to be a motion? So move, yes. Absolutely. Second. Second. Madam Chair, at this time, if it's okay, we can go ahead and take the vote at this time. Yes, please. Great. Uh, we'll start with you, Madam Chair, to reconsider this item. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis? Aye. Commissioner Coloza? Aye. And Commissioner Villegas? Aye. Great, this motion is adopted and carries unanimous. Madam Chair, this item is now before your board for reconsideration. Can we give a date um, to put it back into the agenda, Dr. Campos? Uh, at this time, I will let the board deliberate in terms of what you would like to do with this item. It is now before your no, consideration, no, no, no. it's now open for deliberation. It's now open for you to reconsider the item, uh, debate the item, deliberate on it, and or continue the item if your board would like to do so. Okay. Commissioner Villegas, what would you like to do? I would like to provide a two-week continuance to March 11th. Is March 11th uh, sufficient time? Uh, I know Commissioner Colosa, you have some also insight on this? Um, I think might be and thank you madam chair might be helpful to hear from some of the CMAC representatives quickly i don't know if two weeks is is enough time but i uh, would be interested in hearing their input quickly if we think a resolution can come i know we received a lot of public input um even just today so i just want to make sure that um adequate time and of course the council office wants to make sure that um all the different uh, issues raised by CFAC members are looked into thoroughly, which might require more than two weeks. So I would uh, request uh, uh, 30 days, but would be open to opening up the line to the app to the, the CFAC members. Are, for are you before we open up the lines to the CFAC members? Are you would you be okay with that, Commissioner Villegas? Um, yeah, I just I just share two weeks just because that's normal process. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, a month is fine. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I too want to give time to the CFAC members and everybody to be, to come to come to a solution that everybody's agreeing to. Uh, so if that's okay, um, Commissioner Colosa, we can consider a 30 day continuance and we don't have to um, have the CFAC members um, input on that. I hope 30 days is enough though. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And Madam Chair, 30 days would put you, the closest uh, board meeting for that would be Friday, March 25th, 2022. 
Okay, I don't have a problem on that date. Does anybody have an issue on that date? No, okay, got it. No problems, no problem on my end. Uh, do we have the developer on the meeting, here at the meeting today? Uh, Madam Chair, I do not know if the developer is here uh, for this item. However, I can call for that person to see if the representative is here on the line this morning. Uh, if you are the developer for the tiger tail tree removal item, and if you are on the line, if you can please raise your hand by pressing star nine or click the raise hand icon if you're joining us this morning. Uh, Madam Chair, we do have members from the CPAC uh, committee here. Uh, the Chair, Shelley Bellick, is on the line. I, I see uh, two hands up. Isabel Duvivier is on the line as well. Um, again, if you, are the mem if you are the developer or the representatives for the rep developer for the Tiger Tail a road tree removal item, if you can please raise your hand, I can quickly identify who you are at that time. You can do so by pressing star nine or clicking the raise hand icon. Madam Chair, there's no response from the developer. I can okay. defer to um, Mr. Ramirez uh, from the Bureau of Street Services to see if that person may have been on the line, but I do not see that uh, person raising their hand at this time. Okay, that's fine. As long as um, if the Bureau of Street Services can let the developer know about what we are you know, going to do today uh, or what we're considering. I do see other hands up, and I think that's what Commissioner Colosa was referring to, uh, a couple of CFAC members. Madam Chair, those hands that are raised right now, they're in the queue for uh, item number one and three for okay. today's agenda, right. not, not the uh, reconsideration. Nobody's here to talk about today. Okay, got it. Perfect. Not for the reconsideration. However, there are members from CFAC on the line if you'd like to, us to open up those lines for those. Uh, I'm sorry to inter inter interject here. Uh, my recommendation is we just continue the item. If yeah. The developer's I not here. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, this is an unusual process. It's completely consistent with our rules. However, just given that it's a little bit uh, unusual for us to reconsider items in this way, the developer's not here. My recommendation would be that we just simply cleanly continue the item. For the okay, I appreciate that, Ted, uh, uh, Mr. City Attorney. I appreciate that. I was yeah, exactly that. If they're not here to speak on this item, then I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable moving this item forward and continue it in 30 days. Okay. All right, you're good. Okay, so uh, Dr. Compass, just for logistical uh, situation, do we need to go through uh, voting again for the consideration of 30 days? Uh, we can do two things. One, we can make a motion and go through the voting tabulation to continue it, or two, as chair, you can ask for any objections, and if we hear no objections, then the item would be continued for, uh, for 30 days to March 25th. Okay, well, uh, any, obje I don't, any objections, colleagues? I don't, hearing none, Dr. Campos. Perfect, great. Hearing no objections, we'll go ahead and note this as an advisement item and we'll move this item uh, to Friday, March 25th, 2022. Great, perfect, thank you. Okay, um, hopefully that gives everybody time to make sure that they talk and meet and discuss and we can all come to a solution that works for everyone. And uh, Street Services, I know you're here, please let the developer know what we have just agreed on and so um, we'll see each other back in 30 days on this item. Thank you. All right, um, moving on and moving forward, uh, Dr. Davis, I know you're here, you're here today to do a recognition on the African American Heritage Month, Month contractor recognitions for 2022. Um, I'm turning over the mic over to you so you can lead us on today's presentation. Very excited, by the way. You're on mute though. Okay. <laughs> Mute. Get yourself off mute. Thank you, Madam President. It's an honor to present today. And first, let me say, we have had a successful African American Heritage Month celebration in the city of Los Angeles, not without the help of Mayor Eric Garcetti, uh, from whose office we have really been able to develop a, a world-class program, and we have honored people in every field of human endeavor. Just yesterday, the Bureau of Contract Administration had Accessing LA, which is a conference that we do in various communities throughout Los Angeles. And this one we did virtually, but we targeted everyone and we're very fortunate to have lots of members from South Los Angeles. When we look at what the public value of government of the city of Los Angeles and of the Department of Public Works is, our public value 
is that we create economic opportunity through construction, through our prime contractors. They help to create the world that we have in terms of employment. Uh, we know that even as we look in this country, the first public project of construction was the White House. And in that White House construction, we had slaves who happened to be of African influence, who earlier on were a part of that building. So today, we try to, as we have reflected in some of the policies that Mayor Eric Garcetti has implemented, one, he had a back-to-basic principle when he first came to office. And in that, one of the principles is, is that we would create economic opportunity in Los Angeles for all of Los Angeles. The second policy he made that's very reflective of what we do is, is that Executive Order 27 that says that we want to look at the data and see what we can do to reflect our working environment that it is like the people we serve. And so having said that, every year we honor corporations, con prime contractors whom I work very closely with, that are exemplars, they are examples, they are achievers, they are individuals to whom we look as what can be possible. And today is no exception in 2022, we honor three exemplar public um, um, contractors in terms of them doing work for the city of Los Angeles. But before I honor them, I want to recognize other companies that have made efforts that have been resulted in some positive action. And that's Wood Environment Infrastructure, Gruen Associates, uh, Gen uh, Syntex, and uh, Black Biak. Uh, all those companies have shown an effort. We have, when we look at the data, an underrepresentation of African American subcontractors on the work that we do. We do millions of dollars every year, and we only have 0.3% of African American uh, individuals who get to do work. So today, it is a pleasure to present prime contractors who are leading the way to change the culture in the great city, the second largest city in the United States of America. These companies that we honor on an annual basis are helping to change the culture because they have been able to reach out to areas where we have a challenge. And as a result of their actions, we are able to grow and able to fill in the gaps as we progress towards our own vision of what we'd like to see the city look like in terms of our subcontracting population. The first of those companies I would like to recognize this year for the work that they have done is JR Pipeline. JR Pipeline has helped through their work, and you don't set out to know what you're going to do. You set out to build a good building, and the quality of the building is there. But then we reflect back upon what you did, and half of the time you don't know what you have done. You're just trying to build a good building, and that's okay. But I want you to know what you have done as we try to increase diversity, inclusion, and equity in Los Angeles. JR Pipeline has helped to uh, implement $111,000 into an area where we really had no uh, economic opportunity in the work that we do. We are proud of JR Pipeline for leading the way, and it is my privilege to recognize them today this year for the work that they have done helping to make economic opportunity available in an area of Los Angeles that needs to have more opportunity. So with that, it is my pleasure to present um, Mrs. Is it Mrs. Hanley from uh, Mrs. Is it Holt? Holt. Holt. Okay, Hot. Hot. Mrs. Hot from JR Pipeline and to thank you for the work that you do for the city of Los Angeles in general, and in particular, to reflect back upon how you have touched the lives of people in this city who desperately would like to have more work, you have helped make that happen. And we'd love to hear from you at this moment. Thank you, Commissioner Davis and esteemed members of the board. Um, Dale Pipeline would like to thank the city of Los Angeles for acknowledging our continued commitment to working with the African American professionals, businesses, and labor force. Dale Pipeline is proud to include our 
own company amongst those that are owned and operated as minority business groups. I believe we speak for all minorities when we say that we take great pride in representing our fellow African-American and minority businesses with professionalism, integrity, and a can-do attitude to to always do our best. It is all of our intentions to help and improve the city of Los Angeles projects, our families, local neighborhoods, and communities, and ultimately, the great city of Los Angeles. When the city of LA does well, we all do well. Thank you again. We are honored, and congratulations to all those acknowledged today for African American Heritage Month. Thank well, you, Ms. Mr. David. Mrs. Hot, you all were hot this year because you were number one. So <laughs> thank you so much for the great work that you do. Uh, next, it is my pleasure and privilege. I oftentimes get in trouble because I brag on this company because of what they have been able to do in other areas as we look at presentation for pledges and business pledges. They've always been able to have a comprehensive uh, pledge in business inclusion. They've always been able to find people that other people can't find when they make presentations. And I have always been grateful for their innovation, for their work, and their can-do attitude. And today is no exception. I'm proud that CH2M Hill, better known as Jacobs, has emerged. And, of course, I'm not surprised. uh, Having uh, made sure that they implemented $106,000 into a community that needed that help and opportunity. So it is my pleasure, it is my privilege to really recognize a company that is always in the mix when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, always. Uh, You know, I always complain when someone doesn't do something, but I also want to always compliment those who do do something. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gerardo Orozco representing Jacob's Company. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, good morning, Honorable Board and Staff. Uh, my name is Gerard Orozco with Jacobs, and on behalf of my over 50,000 colleagues around the world, I'm very grateful for this recognition. You know, at Jacobs, uh, we live to the to challenge today, reinvent tomorrow, and we always strive to do what's right. Diversity and inclusion is the right thing to do, and we're honored to be re- re- recognized today by the city family, especially since I witnessed firsthand the dedication and honor of city folks as a council staffer a long time ago. Uh, Now, today, as a thankful thankful contractor working with LA to tackle infrastructure challenges, I applaud your efforts uh, to make LA a better place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Mr. Roscoe. Also, it is a privilege for me to represent or to recognize this uh, addition uh, prime contractor exemplar. I hear their names sitting on the Board of Public Works all the time in terms of bidding for contracts and oftentimes winning contracts. And today I have an even uh, more enlightened opportunity to appreciate who they really are. And this is a company that many of you have heard of before. They have helped to implement $102,000 over the last fiscal year into a community that so desperately wants to be included. And I am so proud that they are helping to lead the way in the city of Los Angeles. They are one of the examples of what other major contractors ought to be. Ladies and gentlemen, Tetra Tech Incorporated and their representative who's here today, please join me in welcoming Brian Jordan. Thank you for the Kind words, Commissioner, and to all the, uh, the entire board and all the, the staff that are on the line. Um, I echo the, the comments that Susan and, and Gerard make, that Los Angeles is just a fantastic city, a fantastic community. Tetra Tech was founded here just over 50 years ago. Um, and, and we really strive to make sure that we understand the values of the community, the culture of the community, and reflect that in the way we staff our projects, the way we implement our projects, and the way we help the board execute on the, the grand vision of what infrastructure will look like in Los Angeles. Um, we'll continue to, to do that. We appreciate the, uh, the, the recognition and certainly strive for uh, the same in the, in the years moving forward to work with disadvantaged communities, minority communities, and continue to implement projects in the, uh, in the parts of Los Angeles that need them most. So thank you very much for the, uh, for the recognition and for recognizing all of our firms. Thank you all so very much. And as we celebrate the various uh, days 
uh, whether it's Asian American Month or Latino American Month, or in this case, African American Heritage Month, it is because of the leadership. You're not just a contractor. You all are leaders. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Normally, we would be handing you in your hand a resolution and a proclamation from Mayor Eric Garcetti. But we're going to mail it to you instead. So please <laughs> forgive us for not being able to give it to you in person. Know, though, that we are eternally grateful for not only the work you do for the city, because you have gone above and beyond the work that you get paid for. You have demonstrated leadership. And we thank you so very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Um, I'm going to open it up to my colleagues, see if they want to share some words uh, to our recognize to this morning. Uh, Commissioner Colosa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, want to give a big round of applause to uh, President Pro Tem Mike Davis, who always does such an amazing job uh, bringing the community together, to bring the city together, bringing every stakeholder um, and making sure that we recognize the contributions of the African American community, which are immense. And if you ever have a chance, uh, and I highly encourage every single person here to attend all the programming or as much of it as possible um, during the month of February. You learn so much. And that's what I appreciate a lot about February is I, every year I learn more about black history. I learn more about the contributions and different trailblazers. And thank you, Commissioner Davis, for putting that together. I, I sit and I listen to so much of the programming that you put together and I'm just completely amazed and stunned by, by the, the continued rich history that I'm still uncovering. So thank you for, for all your hard work on that. I know you spend a lot of time <laughs> um, on this programming. Um, to all the honorees, um, thank you for all your working contributions to um, bring more people to the table you know, to, to really make sure that business inclusion is not just a box that you check, but it's really part of a set of values that your company and your firm has in how you do business, because you know that uh, a rising tide lifts all boats, right, as we've heard, and as you rise um, in the city of Los Angeles, and as you um, are successful in winning contracts and leading projects, that you share that wealth so that more companies um, that aspire to be like a Jacobs, like a Tetra Tech, like a JR Pipeline, have that opportunity. And that's really the value that you've been providing. And I just commend, uh, again, Commissioner Davis for making sure that we acknowledge you today. And thank you for all your hard work in prioritizing um, all the diversity, equity, inclusion work that is very near and dear to, to all of us. So congratulations, um, Af happy African American Heritage Month and um, Thank you for, for being here today. So congratulations. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Appreciate that. Commissioner Villegas. Thank you. Um, I too echo the sentiments of my colleagues. I really appreciate uh, our pro tem uh, Davis for uh, organizing today's uh, recognition. Uh, you know, we're all a piece of the puzzle, and we can't, uh, you know, do this work without uh, private industry. And we applaud private industry for also including, uh, you know, members of our Society of Los Angeles um, to be a part of that. Um, you all, you know, are familiar with our streets. You're familiar with the underground infrastructure. Um, you do work along the LA River. I uh, do work just everywhere throughout our city, um, whether it's our big piping, um, you know, throughout uh, the city or under underground, uh, you know, and just the infrastructure that we have built, um, our police stations, you know, our pools, our recreation centers, all of those are, you know, just one piece of the puzzle. This board gets to approve those projects. You're 
you are the um, private industry that we're you know partnering with and then to boot you also hire our local residents what a big uh, deal that is I really commend you all um, and you really strive to keep the um, you know the middle class working and sustainable I appreciate that thank you very much and thank you for the recognition uh, Commissioner Davis thank you uh, all my colleagues said it's just really great things. And Dr. Davis, I really do. As we're coming to end of this month. I appreciate everything that you do. Uh, your your work this month is very impressive every year. I've been with you now four years, and every month I get even more impressed by you. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for bringing up to head Jacobs, um, you know, JR Pipeline and Tetra Tech. They are one of our most um, really efficient and good to work with contractors that really work and have the same vision that we have. So I appreciate that from each and one of you. And I do appreciate that you include many different types of entities within your work. It's important that you do that. Huh? You know, uh, I'm sure all of you remember when you were small babies, businesses, uh, and how much you really wanted to be part of those bigger businesses. Um, and so this is your time and your opportunity to grant that to others. So thank you for doing that. Uh, especially, especially uh, not just this month, but every month that you do. So thank you for that. And with that, Dr. Davis, uh, any last parting words? And we will close today's recognition ceremony. Well, we just want to once again thank them for their transformative leadership, transformational leadership, according to Norhouse in his uh, seminal work uh, in his book called Leadership, Theory and Practice defines transformative leadership as a leader who works with followers, who helps those followers go past where they expected that they could go. And so when I look at these leader contractors, they have demonstrated <clears throat> to other contractors that we can do more than just build a great building that stands tall. We can build that building with everybody and represent the people that are being served in that building. You have demonstrated that and that's the cutting edge of difference between not just uh, an authentic leader, but a transformative leader. You have transformed the lives of those who pay taxes in this city who wanted to be included in. You have demonstrated in your work how they can be included in and how they can help build that building. So for that, once again, thank you so very much for being you. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Brian, uh, Susan, and Gerard, nice seeing you all. Enjoy the rest thank of the you. day. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Davis. That was really lovely. And thank you for bringing that up today. Uh, we look forward to always celebrating with you every month, every year. Yes. Yes. All right, well, moving us on to business <laughs> that we have to actually take care of. Thank you for that. Uh, we're moving on now to item number one on today's agenda. Item number one is in Council District 8. This is a revised task order solicitation number 00-016 and budget increase. AECOM Technical Services, Inc., Southwest Street Maintenance Yard, recommending the board to one, Authorize the city engineer to issue a revision of task order number 00-016 to AECOM Technical Services, Inc., increasing the budget authority from $1,225,000 to $1,493,435, including contingency for continued soil and groundwater remedi remediation, monitoring, and related services for the Southwest Street Maintenance Yard. And today here we have Mr. Michael Mohern, Mohern I hope I'm saying it right, uh, to do today's presentation. Go on, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, Thank you, uh, Ambos, Executive Officer, would you like to consider the public comments on item one first or after Mr. Mohern's presentation? Oh, true, true. Mr. Mohern, um, give, me a, give us a minute. We're gonna take public comment first. And then, sure. you, okay, thank you. We'll do public comment, uh, Dr. Campos. Thank you, and sorry, Michael, for the interruption. Just no problem. Uh, Milan Garrison, if you can please unmute your microphone at this time by clicking the unmute microphone, or unmute icon, sorry. The Board of Public Works is now considering item number one. You will have two minutes to speak under this item. Please go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, um, I made a mistake. I didn't have my agenda in front of me. I'm for uh, item number three, so I recuse myself from my number. 
Okay, no worries. I'll put you down for item three, not one. Thank you. Madam Chair, I apologize for that. No problem. Okay, Mr. Mohan, all you again now. <laughs> okay, can you hear me adequately? Yes, we can. I have no public speakers. I guess my uh, topic isn't very important. Uh, that's okay. Uh, as you mentioned, this is the Southwest Street Yard where we're doing continued remediation and we come to you annually for a, an increase. Uh, we're doing this under the purview of the Regional Water Quality Control Board, so it's a state mandate. Uh, this year, um, we have to do a little more work, so the budget has increased a bit. Uh, the state has asked us to include some idle wells to be sampled and then all the wells that we normally sample to do increased uh, chemical testing on each one and we also have to do a, a rebound test and that's basically good news because it indicates to the regional board what we've been um, discussing with them is that we're getting close to the end of this remedial uh, effort and we've removed most of the contaminants that we can and this rebound test that we hope to do in the fall will um, will prove to that. Uh, there's no guarantee that it'll be successful or that the regional board will grant us case closure, but I'm hoping maybe uh, in about a year that we can get closure from this site. Uh, other than that, it's pretty routine. We have uh, ACOM giving us a fairly good uh, BIP representation, especially in the NBE and WBE. And... Um, that's basically a, a relatively routine uh, request. Thank you, Mr. Mohan. I will open it up for any questions. Any questions, colleagues? I'll start with uh, Commissioner Villegas. Thank you. I appreciate your report. Um, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Colosa, any questions? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. No questions for me. Thank you for your report, Mr. Mohan. You're welcome. Got it. And Dr. Davis, any questions? No questions for me either on this item. Got it. I don't have any questions either, Mr. Mohan. Is there a second to my motion to move this item forward? Second. Got it, Dr. Davis. Dr. Campos, there's a motion on the table moved by my by me, <laughs> second by Dr. Davis. Is, can we do roll call? So we'll go ahead and start with you, Madam Chair. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. Commissioner Colosa? Aye. And Commissioner Villegas? Aye. This motion is adopted and carries unanimous. Madam Chair, would you like to consider this item to go forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. All right, Ms. Mohan, go ahead and pay our bills. <laughs> okay, thank you very thank much. Bye-bye, have a good day. Bye. All right, colleagues, I'm moving on to item number two. This is <coughs> item in Council District 15. This is a one-time purchase order replacement Afton pump Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant, recommending the board to one, authorize the no substitution purchase of a replacement Afton pump to be used for reverse osmosis feed water located at the Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant with a maximum cost of $241,000, including taxes, shipping, and handling, and two, authorize the director of the Bureau of Sanitation to request the Department of General Services to solicit bids, select the lowest and most responsive bidder that meets specifications and create a one-time purchase order for the purchase of the aforementioned item. Okay, Mr. Oh God, Lance, <laughs> here we go. Go ahead, tell us what you're doing. Okay. Don't get it right. No problem. Good morning, President Garcia, commissioners, and bureau leaders. I'm Lance Thibodeau from the Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant. Um, and as was mentioned by President Garcia, what we're requesting is the uh, permission to work with general services for a purchase order um, for uh, no substitutions, um, replacement of a uh, Afton brand pump. And this is for our reverse osmosis feed water. And the uh, total cost is the $370,241. Um, we'd like permission to work with general services in order to create this one-time purchase order. And again, this is um, equipment only. Our plant staff will install the equipment. And this has been planned in our capital equipment replacement program. Um, and so just a brief background. Um, at Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant, as you know, we have our advanced water purification facility. Um, 
And so as part of that equipment, we have four reverse osmosis feed water pumps, one for each of our um, RO systems. Um, two of these pumps were installed with our phase one AWPF in 2002. So these are 20 years old now, and it's one of these that we're looking to replace with this, um, with this board report. Um, we have two newer pumps for our two newer trains, which were installed in our AWPF expansion not too long ago in 2017. So those work great. Um, and so again, we're looking to buy a replacement for one of those older pumps. Um, and this is um, of particular importance for the reliability of our system. Um, it would allow us to have uh, four, I'm sorry, we would then have five pumps. So when we need to service one, we can remove it, set it for servicing, and then we can put the, um, this replacement pump in. Um, and I'll just share my screen to show a, uh, if it's okay to show a quick process flow so you can see where this pump fits in. Um, are you already okay. host? No, let me go ahead and no. make it. Okay. Co-host. Okay. Hang it's on. no trouble. Sorry yes. about that. Thank Lance, you. just give me about 30 seconds. Oh, okay. Make some changes here for you. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. And um, this cost, again, it's um, from our CERP. There's no cost to the general fund. It's um, funded by a sewer capital fund. Um, and then again, it's um, $370,241. And that includes the taxes, shipping, and also the handling of this pump. Great. Lance, quick question. Who will do the installation? So our plant staff will do it. Our plant maintenance staff will do the installation. Okay, got it. Mr. Thibodeau, this is Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. You should have co-hosting rights at this time. Just a quick point of clarification. The flow chart that you are um, demonstrating here to the board, is this in the board report or is this a new document? It is not in the board report. It is a new document. If I can ask you if you can send this copy to us so that we can enter into the record so that the record is complete. Okay. Thank I you. Will. Can you sh see my screen? There should be an AWPS process flow. Yes, we can. Okay. And so, uh, as you're aware, at Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant, we produce the tertiary effluent, which I'm identifying by this um, cursor here. If these are microfiltration feed water wet well, that water then gets pumped to, through our microfiltration trains. Um, it removes suspended solids um, and bacteria from the water. That that microfiltration filtrate will fill one of our, we, we have two reverse, osmos, reverse osmosis feed water tanks represented here. And then from there, the water gets pumped out by uh, four reverse osmosis feed water pumps. And so this is the item that we're asking to replace as part of, part of this board report. And so again, we have four of these pumps. Each of them feeds one of our four reverse osmosis trains. Um, and then from there, the water continues on through our advanced oxidation process, where it's dis disinfected, constituents of emerging concern are destroyed, and then that purified water continues on for post-treatment where we add in uh, chemicals to add minerals back into the water so that it's safe for the distribution to the Dominguez Gap barrier and then also future industrial users. And so again, this is where in our process flow, the particular equipment that we're uh, asking to replace in this board report is located. One reverse osmosis feed water pump. Are there any questions? Great. Thank you, Lance. Um, yes, let me see if, if any of my colleagues have any questions. Colleagues, um, I'll start with you, Dr. Davis. Any questions on this item? Um, in terms of when we intend to do the work here, as, as far as uh, replacing, we're, we're replacing older um, equipment, correct? Yes, Dr. Davis. Um, the equipment we're replacing was installed in 2002. And so this is a 20-year-old pump that we'll be taking out. We'll send that 
off-site to a manufacturer that will be paid with O&M. We will rebuild that pump and then bring it back on site so we have it as a spare, but then we'll put the new pump that's being discussed in this board report in the, in, uh, we'll install it with plant staff so that we can then have it in use. Great. So how long do we anticipate that'll take us? Is this the proposition of uh, a couple of weeks or? or uh, great question. Um, well, once we have the pump on site, yeah, it would take a couple of weeks in order to install it for us to plan the, um, the work and then for our maintenance staff to remove the old one and install the new one it would take a, a couple of weeks. And um, the company that does this is the one with whom we've been dealing with in the past? Well, so city staff, our personnel at Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant will install it. And we're um, wanting to uh, do a null substitutions purchase order with the lowest bidder who meets the specifications for this particular model of Afton pump. Um, and so there's different suppliers for this type of pump, but mm -hmm. there's one manufacturer who is Afton. And so okay. whichever supplier has the lowest price, but is able to provide this particular pump because it needs to be identical to our others. So sure. we can easily switch it out right. without any kind of modification would be the um, vendor that gets selected to um, supply that part, that pump to us. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate the update. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, Commissioner Colos, any questions? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for your report, Mr. Thibodeau, and thank you for sharing um, the rendering. Um, that was helpful and for your explanation. I don't have any questions on this item. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa and Commissioner Villegas. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the report also, Mr. Thibodeau. I don't have any questions. Thanks for the um, yeah thorough explanation. Really helpful. I've been there before, but uh, it's been, it's good to us to review the process. Appreciate it. Yes, and things change, so you're always welcome for another tour. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Villegas. Yes, agreed. I appreciate the visual because at least it tells us exactly what we're purchasing in that long process that we have. So um, is there a motion to move this item forward? So moved. Second. Got it. Uh, there's been a, a motion on the table to move it forward by Commissioner Villegas, second by Dr. Davis. Dr. Campos, should we take roll call? Absolutely. We'll start with you, Madam Chair. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. Commissioner Coloza. Aye. And Commissioner Villegas. Aye. This motion is adopted and carries unanimous. Madam Chair, would you like to move item number two forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lance. Uh, have a good weekend. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you, uh, colleagues. Uh, we're going to move on now to item number three. This is item uh, in Council District T 10. This is a tree removal for 1010 South Kenmore Avenue and West Olympic Boulevard. One fine under the California Public Resources Code Section 21166 and the State Environmental Quality Act CEQA Guidelines Section 15332 on the basis of substantial evidence contained in the whole record that since the city's prior certification of categor categorical exemption case number ENV-2019-2499-CE, there have been no changes to the project, changes with, the project, changes with the respect to the circumstances under which the project is being undertaken or new information of substantial importance concerning the project, which caused new significant environmental effects or a substantial increase in the severity of previously identified significant effects and therefore no subsequent CE, supplemental CE or other anal analysis is required for the project. Two, specify that the Bureau of Street Services, Urban Forestry Division located at 1149 South Broadway is custodian of all, of all the documents or other material that constitute the record of proceedings Upon, upon which the board decision is based. 
Three, review and approve the request for a fee permit for the removal of four trees, which include two pink trumpet and two typo, typo, <laughs> get it right, trees, tree replacements are required. And four, concur with the Bureau of Street Services determination that the site cannot feasibly accommodate all required replacement trees and pursuant to LMC 62.177C, authorize a tree replacement guarantee fee to satisfy the board's tree repla replacement, replanting requirement. Um, I, colleagues, I think I wanna pass it on to Ted Jordan. Ted Jordan, our city attorney has um, some updated information that he wants to share. So Mr. Jordan. Yes, thank you. Um, well, I recommend that we actually continue the item. Um, I would like to take a, a, a little closer look at the record here uh, and the uh, CEQA documentation. And I, I'm gonna recommend that we uh, make some clarifications in the report and on the agenda before the board so that it, what, what is before you is more properly noted. I, I think we do have a number of folks here who wanna make public comment. The, the, the kinds of things that I'm looking at uh, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I can make recommendations to staff. So but I'm sorry to be so wordy. I think my recommendation for you is to take the public comment that we have here I, I uh, and then continue the item. And then uh, I would ask that we, when we bring it back, and a week is all I would need. Um, when we bring it back, you'll see some uh, differences in the report and the agenda, but all of the underlying facts are gonna be remaining the same. Okay. The project previously had a categorical exemption as it went through the planning process. And so the, the changes I wanna make on the agenda in the report just reflect the reflect that, but make somewhat different findings for the board to make. Okay, so it's more of a, uh, the way it was presented in the Correct. agenda that we-, Correct. we, we the, 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 I, I have no knowledge of any differences uh, in, in the facts of the case. It's just how we are presenting the CEQA determination for the board. Okay, I, I can hear that. Um, I say we take public comment, let's hear public comment, um, and then we are uh, asking commissioners to consider the continuance of a week of this item after public comment. I hope, um, Brian, but I think, um, Brian, you still had a presentation to make, right? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, hang on a minute, let's do public comment first. We'll take on your presentation and then we'll vote on continuing uh, based on uh, city attorney's recommendation. And by the way, Brian, just, just to get it clear, one week is, uh, is not gonna change much of everything of the project, right? No, no, it won't. Okay, okay I just wanted to make sure we, we, there wasn't some sense of urgency. Okay, uh, let's go with public comment, Dr. Campos. Absolutely, Madam Chair. We have four um, individuals on the line for item number three. We'll go ahead and start with the first caller. Caller ending in 846. Caller ending in 846. If you can please unmute your microphone at this time by pressing star six. The Board of Public Works is now considering item number three. You'll be given two minutes to speak under this item. Please go ahead. Hello, Board. My name is TJ Farr, and I am the treasurer of the Pico Union Neighborhood Council. I urge the board to deny this permit for tree removal at this location. I find several of the application processes have been problematic. For example, the wrong neighborhood council was notified about this land use item. Also on a recent visit to the site, one of the trumpet trees has already been cut down. I'd like to reference the general plan framework objective 3.7, which states Provide for the stability and enhancement of multifamily residential neighborhoods and allow for the growth in areas where there is sufficient public infrastructure and services that uh, and the residents' quality of life can be maintained or improved. You spoke earlier about the importance of public values, so I ask how is that reflected in allowing this builder to flout rules and destroy trees before a determination has been made by this board? It seems to me that this sets a precedent for developers to disregard that our community values these beautiful trees and the character they bring to our streets. When I walk and bike in my neighborhood, it is trees such as the trumpet and tipu that make it enjoyable to be outside. Residents count on you to uphold the rules, and yet the burden often falls on those same residents to fight the developers that do not care about the communities they build in. Please deny this permit for tree removal. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you, TJ. 
Uh, Madam Chair, we'll move on to the next caller. Um, we'll go ahead and go with um, Milan Garrison. If you can please unmute your microphone at this time, you'll have two minutes to speak under item number three. Uh, thank you, and good morning, uh, uh, Chairman and, and, and Board members. I'm Mylan Garrison with Maxim Development. I represent the developer. Um, there were, we, we did receive a letter uh, from the Pico Union Neighborhood Council um, making the accusations of, of, uh, of our, our unwillingness to, to work with them. Um, the project went through a couple of various uh, uh, different uh, outlooks. We, we, initially, we had proposed a hotel development um, and then subsequently we came back and that required a public hearing. And, and so the next we, we met with them on that project. Um, but the, subsequently the owner decided that he really wanted to do a TLC project and therefore went through the process of preparing the project for the TLC approvals. The TLC approvals does not require a public hearing and somehow we missed going back to the neighborhood council um, to, to get their input on it. Um, we are willing to do so. Um, you know, we, we don't have any reservation to, to not allow them to give us some input and we would look forward to doing that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Milan. We'll go ahead and move on to the next caller. Uh, let's go with Aurora Corona. If you can please unmute your microphone at this time, you'll be given two minutes to speak under item number three. Uh, good morning, commissioners and of the board and staff. My name is Aurora Corona. I'm the secretary and chair of the quality of life uh, from the Pico Union Neighborhood Council. I want to thank uh, Mr. Garrison for offering to speak to us. Um, I am in agreement uh, with, uh, with, with TJ, our, our treasurer said. Um, I passed by there yesterday and I did send the board a picture of a butcher tree uh, that is on the list. Um, and I was just shocked that the developer has already taken it upon themselves to uh, knock down this tree, mutilate it, and just because they think that this is going to be an approved case automatically approved by the board. I find that sad. I find that um, something needs to be done. Uh, I believe that the developer, whoever did it, obviously it is someone at that company, they should be held accountable for. Um, our, when we did not get the information, we did contact the LA City Department of City Planning. They said that they it was an unfortunate oversight, but in the long term, we explained to them that we lost the right to appeal the case. These trees have been in our community for over 50 years. I'm a lifetime resident, and like TJ, you know our community lacks trees, and for these trees to be removed for a cement driveway is you know crazy. I believe that they should have taken that into consideration and put the driveway somewhere else and allow our trees to stand. So uh, I also find it also uh, the fact that they're not doing a two for one as required ratio, uh, that they will only pay $3,980 and their one tree is already gone. So what are they replacing? Nothing. For that price, it should be higher. I mean, I know it is a uh, Los Angeles uh, Municipal Code uh, that was just recently uh, administered in 2018, but it just seems uh, unheard of that you would only pay $4,000 because you can't, you're required, the two for one ratio, you just can't do it. That's a drop in the bucket for these kinds of companies um, that have a lot of money. We're not. Uh, Two minutes. We, Please wrap up. Oh, thank you. Thank you, board. And I urge you not to approve and we're willing to negotiate with the um, developer. Thank you, Aurora. We'll move on to the next caller, Joanne D'Antonio. If you can please unmute your microphone at this time, you'll have two minutes to speak under item number three. Thank you. Um, I am speaking today as an, in can you hear me? Yes. I'm speaking today as an individual and I am, I was contacted as chair of the trees committee for the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance. Um, an illegal tree pruning by construction will be rewarded with a removal permit if you approve this. Then the Neighborhood Council will send you a picture of the destruction. Further in the transmittals, you can see heavy mobile minis stifling the trees that were placed under the Tipu tree canopies before any permits to destroy the trees was granted. 
This would never be allowed in Santa Monica where tree protection zones during construction are actively enforced by their urban forestry staff. And one street tree was illegally removed, this in an environmental justice area. As you know, there was no, this case, there was no official public knowledge of the project, no due process because the termination letter for case DIR 2019-2948 SPR was sent to the wrong neighborhood council. So their planning committee had no input at the appropriate time. It's a developer's world thanks to the state, but we must find a way not to sacrifice our tree canopy as we march to the state's rigid requirements. We have to find a way not to make the city unhealthy while we do this. There has to be more room for mature trees. Low income units deserve street trees. Shade trees on upper floors can do nothing for, pub for the public that is encouraged to walk on the street and not use their cars. We have to figure out how to protect the existing public trees when we build. They are public property. We need to ask developers to design new projects with room for street trees. Underground parking has to allow room for tree roots. Roots can be put in cells not to interfere with structures. We can't just let them pay not to plant. We need to instruct this to the planning department to withhold tree removal and we have to withhold, I'm sorry, we have to withhold tree removal permits. So we set an example. The neighborhood council was not allowed their due process. This whole approach has been a failure. And now we will bless, be blessing this messed up process with a tree removal Two permit. Minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Please wrote. Two minutes. Thank you. We have one last caller, Madam Chair, that just raised their hand a few minutes ago. Um, we'll go ahead and take that caller, the last caller on the line, which is R for Roger. If you can please unmute your microphone at this time, you'll have two minutes to speak under item number three. Hello? Yes, please come ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Rodrigo. I work here at the project. Um, I just heard uh, uh, one of the members uh, say how a tree here at the job site was butchered. Um, unfortunately, that was a LADWP. They're here right now at the job site. They are replacing a power pole and several of the branches were on the way. We try to protect the trees as much as we can. Uh, we never touched those trees. We were never in charge of the removal of several branches of those trees. Uh, I have pictures that I can show you. It was LEDWP who came in. Several of the branches were on their way, and they just proceeded to uh, do the removal of those branches. We had absolutely nothing to do with uh, the removal of those branches. Thank you. Dr. Campos, is this the last of our callers? That is correct, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Brian, we're gonna uh, please go ahead and do your presentation and then we'll go into more um, deliber deliberations. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, hello, uh, Vice President Garcia and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Brian Ramirez uh, with the Streets LA Urban Forestry Division. Uh, we have before us a request for a fee permit to remove four parkway trees, which include two Tipuana Tipu trees and two pink trumpet Handoranthus heptophilus trees. Um, so the developer is, is currently constructing a seven-story mixed-use development at 1010 South Kenmore Avenue, located on the southeast corner of West Olympic Boulevard. This project will provide 126 residential dwelling units, 5,998 square feet of commercial retail space, and 13 dwelling units are reserved for extremely low-income households. The developer uh, initially applied the Bureau of Engineering for a construction class A permit to construct the driveways, perform streetlight relocation and other required improvements as part of the project scope and needs. Bureau of Engineering informed uh, the developer that driveway installation and streetlights uh, relocation may necessitate street tree removals. Therefore, the developer contacted Streets LA and uh, requested an inspection to determine the relationship between the required conditions and the adjacent trees. Uh, subsequently, a, a Street LA Arborist inspected the location on September 30th, 2021. The inspection revealed that uh, three trees along South Kenmore Avenue, which include one floss silk, um, which was a tree that was uh, trimmed by LADWP, according to the comments, 
and two Tipuana Tipu trees uh, that are in fair health, measuring approximately 15 to 20 inches in diameter by 25 to 30 feet in height, growing in four foot parkways. And two additional pink trumpet trees on West Olympic Boulevard uh, that are in fair health, measuring approximately four to six inches in diameter and uh, approximately 15 feet in height, growing in four foot tree wells. The two tipu trees um, on, on the southern portion of the project uh, along Kenmore um, uh, have been planted within 10 feet of each other. They're continually topped for clearance of the overhead power lines that exist. And uh, they're within the footprint of the uh, proposed driveway. And may I add, it, it is already a, a, um, a slab that has been poured for transmittal number seven. Um, the relocating the driveway would mean a complete structural redesign of the west side of the building. The entire slab ground floor has already been poured, which means it's now permanently in place. Um, additionally, the two pink trumpet trees uh, on, along Olympic Boulevard. Uh, one of them is uh, directly where a DWP transformer is to be installed. Uh, Urban Forestry Division made uh, an attempt to relocate this and, and it was initially um, proposed to be installed along Kenmore Avenue. However, uh, the existing overhead wires uh, that conflict with safe installation and future maintenance of the transformer um, must be installed on the Olympic Boulevard side, according to DWP. And one additional pink trumpet tree was in uh, severely pruned condition on the adjacent property at 2848 West Olympic Boulevard. Uh, is is uh, directly where a street light will be uh, installed. So relocation of the street light is required by the Bureau of Street Lighting in order to adequately illuminate the area along Olympic Boulevard. So the four uh, trees are within the footprint of the proposed driveway, street light relocation, and LADWP transformer, and will be severely impacted. Therefore, uh, removal is required for those four trees. Um, in regards to the California Environmental Quality Act, um, the Department of City Planning was the lead agency for preparing this. And it determined that the tree removals are categorically exempt under Article 3, Section 1, Class 32. The project notice of exemption was utilized in forming the recommendations in this report and is on file with the Streets LA and is available to the public uh, upon request. As it pertains to the notifications, the 10th Council Office District, or the 10th Council District Office uh, was informed of the tree removal request on November 16th, 2021. The council office uh, was to inform any persons inquiring of the opportunity to be heard at the board at the public hearing for the removals of this permit request. Uh, in addition, uh, this uh, there was a notice um, of these proposed tree removals that was physically posted on these trees on September 30th, 2021. Proposed tree removals were included on the Streets LA tree removal, no tree removal notification system. The Community Forest Advisory Committee and Department of Neighborhood Empowerment was also notified at this time. So if approved, uh, the applicant shall plant a minimum of one 24 inch box size pink trumpet on the West Olympic Boulevard and five 24 inch box size Australian willows on the Kenmore, uh, Kenmore Avenue. The two additional trees needed uh, to meet the board's two to one replacement policy cannot feasibly be planted on site. Therefore, pursuant to Los Angeles Municipal Code section 62.177, applicants shall pay the replacement guarantee fee of $3,890 and all replacement trees on site shall be watered for a minimum of five years after planting. As a concluding statement, um, alternative methods and options were in fact uh, explored. Uh, Streets LA seeks to preserve healthy, desirable trees when possible and will only consider tree removal after all feasible alternatives for tree preservation have been exhausted. The applicant was given approval by the Department of City Planning to construct their mixed use commercial residential project in February of 2020. As such, the applicant requires driveway access for tenants and patrons of the proposed project. Uh, they need to relocate an existing streetlight and install a power power transformer for power. 
The driveway installation, streetlight relocation, and power transformer installation will require removal of these uh, four trees. Um, so this concludes my presentation, and I'm here to address any uh, concerns or questions that the board may have at this time. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Uh, colleagues, knowing that we are going to continue, you can either ask questions now or we can reserve until we continue this item. Uh, I'll call on each and one of you, though. Uh, Commissioner Davies, any questions? Well, since we're going to continue it, I, I would support the continuation. But just for the record, um, we notified the office on the 16th of November. Um, did we receive any constituents that expressed any concern or feedback about the project after that, Mr. Uh, Ramirez? Yes, uh, we, we actually have uh, numerous uh, emails that were sent to uh, one of the superintendents here at uh, Urban Forestry. We have them all on file and, and the appropriate response was uh, sent to them, um, noting that they can uh, comment uh, within this, this uh, public hearing. So were these individuals supporting the project or do you recall if in fact some of them had some concerns about the project? Um, most of them uh, had uh, concerns from what I was able to, to review. Um, they opposed to the tree removals and um, one of the uh, reasons being is that I'm not sure how um, informed they are of the project, the design that's actually taking place for this project. Okay. So for a couple of reasons, Madam Chair, thank you so much, Mr. Ramirez. Uh, I support uh, the suggestion that we allow ourselves more time to evaluate and take appropriate action on this matter. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, Commissioner Colosa, any questions? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I also support the continuance as well and uh, will hold uh, my questions until it's rescheduled. Got it. Thank you. And uh, Commissioner Villegas, sorry, call on you. We'll hang on a bit, a bit for Commissioner Villegas. I don't have any questions myself and I do support the continuance of this item. Commissioner Villegas, do you want to ask any questions now or reserve your right? I'm sorry about that. Um, All right, we called you right at the, that time. I noticed that. Sorry. Sometimes I just get... Um, no worries. I have, a, I have a mother with Alzheimer's that lives with me. And, no um, worries. Let me see it. Yeah. Anyways, um, I was just going to suggest possibly adding um, another week uh, so that the developer and the neighborhood council could meet. Maybe that would allow for more time. Right. Okay, understood. One uh, additional week would be okay with you, Mr. Vega. So two weeks. Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Ramirez, we, we want to continue this item for two weeks from today, uh, and then Dr. Campos will give us the the official uh, language to that. But in the meantime, we want to encourage uh, some um, that the developer makes the presentation to the right neighborhood council because I heard that that was an issue. So it will either happen or hasn't happened. Can you follow up that that does happen, Mr. Ramirez? Yes, I will, I will do that. Okay, thank you very much. And I hope that, again, just like the other tree item, that you know we can come to a, um, a compromise that everybody feels uh, fair about someone. Okay? Okay, Dr. Campos, we want to continue this item in two weeks from today. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. Two weeks from today would be Friday, March 11th, 2022. Okay. Hearing no objections from your board, I can go ahead and uh, make that item as an advisement for Friday again, March 11th, 2022. Okay, please do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Ramirez, see you back on two weeks from today. And thank you to all the callers as well. We'll be taking up this item March 11th. All right, colleagues, this takes us now to item number four on today's agenda. This is a uh, joint report between BOE and BCA. This is an odd council districts, contract award, super expedited wastewater emergency rehabilitation for sewers contract serial number seven. When recommending the board to one, approve Matthew and Stewart Company Inc., MNR Construction Inc., and Tomovich and associates as the respective qualified lowest bid price contractors to provide sewer repairs 
of urgent necessity under the super expedited wastewater emergency rehabilitation for sewers contract zero number seven contract for a not to exceed cost ceiling of 45 million with a duration of five years and two authorize the president of the president of two members of the board to execute signed contracts received from the from the three approved contractors and forward the three contracts to the city clerk for attestation okay mr wong what are you doing hi good morning commissioners uh this is george wong from the bureau of engineering wastewater convenience construction division um we're happy to come to the board today to um ask the board for consideration to execute uh, three contracts for the uh, sewers uh, to the sewers program um this is our seventh in the serial number of the sewers contract uh, the current one right now is uh, expiring in November of 2022 this year. And uh, we are also, um, that, that program started off as $30 million and uh, the board had increased that budget uh, to $43 million. Uh, we're also approaching that uh, ceiling already uh, for the current sewer six uh, contract. So uh, this sewer seven will continue the expedited repairs um, and rehabilitation of expedited uh, sewers throughout the city of LA. And uh, this is a unit price contract, um, which will be uh, ongoing for sewer assessment and maintenance program. Uh, so this, the way this works is the city will, this, this engineer will list the applicable bid items that the contractor submitted. And then um, we'll, once we get a project, we'll put that into a, a, an estimate. Um, and then they will be assigned to the lowest, uh, the lowest uh, bidder. Uh, and then a construction will be issued uh, to begin the project. Um, just a little background on this contract. Uh, this sewer seven contract will, uh, will have a contract ceiling of 45 million and has a duration of five years. Um, we, in, we issued the uh, request for qualification um, back in September of 2021. Uh, we got four responses back from uh, con four contractors and uh, they submitted a, a statement of qualification or SOQ um, about, and, and that was evaluated by the Bureau of Engineering and Bureau of Contract Administration um, based on the qualifications uh, mentioned in the RFQ. Um, all four contractors uh, that were considered are all local business uh, enterprise certified. And uh, the results of the evaluation was uh, the low bid was uh, Matthew and Stewart. The second lowest bid was MNR Construction. And then the third low bid was Tomovich and Associate. Uh, for this contract, even though we got four um, applicants, uh, we, we only have three, we only selected three contractors uh, to be recommended for this, uh, for the sewer seven contract. Uh, MNR construction, uh, there was a technical, there was a correction that was uh, made um, because of the pay factors and the total bid amount. Um, and Basically, uh, a pay factor is given to, uh, for like work that's done, um, let's say you have a manual excavation uh, or doing somewhere that has uh, limited access. So that increases a bid item cost uh, because of the difficulty of the work. So um, MNR uh, had uh, put a value on their bid sheet, which would have reduced that bid item. Um, and then because they were consistent and it was a, obviously a clerical error of, uh, the BOE staff in consultation with the city attorney had uh, set, uh, made that adjustment to correct that uh, uh, error. And uh, the MNR construction was contacted and they were notified of the change. Um, and, we, and there was no objection to that change. Um, so that result also changed MNR from being the first low bidder to the second low bidder. And then the Tomovich uh, who was the third low bidder, their rankings did not change. Uh, this project also has a BIP waiver uh, due to the fact that there's, uh, there's, we don't have a project um, to the, due to the urgent necessity of the project. Um, and the, once we get the job, it uh, has to be done very quickly. And, uh, but there's also a lot of subcontracting opportunities uh, as well. Some of these opportunities include um, lining, they include um, pipe bursting and also uh, cleaning of the sewer pipes. Uh, so there's a lot of, and those are very typical work and it happens frequently. So a lot, there are a lot of subcontractors uh, that are involved in, uh, in the process as well for this contract. 
Um, so therefore, uh, we rec that's why we're coming to the board today um, after the review uh, that these three contractors be offered a five-year contract. Um, and it will take effect uh, once it's a test, a test expired five years from the state. Uh, and there is no impact to the general fund. This will be funded by uh, the, the sewers, um, uh, sewers. I think you're, uh, yeah. improvement plans. Mr. Wong, can you just repeat the very last thing you just said? You went a little choppy there. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it will be, it's the sewer, uh, it'll be the sewer improvement funds. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. No, it's not you. I'm sure it's the, it's the Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mr. Wong, are you done with your presentation for today? Yes. Okay. Hang on for questions. Right. Thank you. All right. All right, colleagues, any questions on this item? I'll start with you, Commissioner Colosa. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I don't have any questions on this item. Thank you for your detailed presentation, Mr. Rang. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Davis, any questions on this item? No questions for me on this item. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. And Commissioner Villegas, any questions? I have no questions this time. Thank you. Thank you. I also don't have any questions. I'm glad we're getting this done. Uh, is, uh, is there a motion on the table to move this item forward? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Colosa. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Villegas. Dr. Campos, we have a first by Commissioner Colosa and a second by Commissioner Villegas. Should we call roll call? Absolutely. We'll start with you, Madam Chair. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. Commissioner Colosa. Aye. And Commissioner Villegas. Aye. This motion is adopted and carries unanimous. Madam Chair, would you like to move item number four forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. All right, Ms. Ron, have a good weekend. Good Thank weekend. you for your time today. Bye-bye. All right, colleagues, uh, this takes us now to item number five. This is an administrative item for Council District 4. A specification submitted for board adoption and authorization to advertise for the invitation of bids. Council District 4, Sheldon Arlita Park, Street Improvements, W.O.E. 170-4411-F, comma, E. 170-449-F, comma, E. 170-451-F, estimate to be $3,958,824. Bid receipt date, March 30th, 2022. Um, Dr. Campos, I know we don't have a speaker on this item, but can we double confirm that this is in Council District 4? Um, um, maybe because of redistricting, it made it, but I'm not 100% sure this is in Council District 4. It might be in 6. Yeah, absolutely. We can double check. Would you like to make that verification before the item is considered, or would you like us just to confirm after the fact? Confirm after is fine. I just want to make sure that we we're, we're stating the right district. Absolutely. We'll make sure to make the note on the journals, and I will uh, reach out to the Bureau of Engineering to make sure that we have the correct uh, council district. Okay. And Madam Chair, on this item, one, uh, there's been a friendly suggestion to amend this item. Uh, to adopt this item as amended to reflect the Los Angeles Regional Alliance Marketplace for Procurement, which is better known as LA Ramp, as the advertisement platform, not the Los Angeles Business Assistance Virtual Network. Um, just wanted to um, put that out there for the board to consider the item as amended. Yes, good catch, Dr. Campos. Yes, please. We want to make sure it makes it into the RAP program. Okay, a wrap database, which we're excited about. Okay, Dr. Campos, um, we just need to take uh, an action to move this item forward, right? And we will be okay? A motion to amend and adopt, yes. Okay, got it. Um, is there a second to my motion to move this item forward? Second. Second. There's a first by me and second by Commissioner Villegas and Dr. Davis. Should we take roll call? Absolutely, and this motion is to adopt it, item number five as amended. We'll start with you, Madam Chair. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis. Aye. Commissioner Coloza. Aye. And Commissioner Villegas. Aye. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> this motion is adopted. And again, this is for item number five as amended. Madam Chair, can we move this item forward forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. 
Great, thank you. Uh, we are now moving on to item number six. This is in all council districts. It's an administrative item. The mayor and city council have approved and authorized the Board of Public Works on behalf of the Bureau of Sanitation to execute the proposed amendment number two with Myron Electric Construction Corporation for specialized high voltage services for the city's wastewater system. Is there a second to my motion to move this item forward? Moved. So second. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Uh, there's an item on the table now moved by myself and second by Commissioner Colosa. Should we take a roll call, Dr. Campos? Yes, we'll start with you, Madam Chair. Aye. President Pro Tem Davis? Aye. Commissioner Colosa? Aye. And Commissioner Villegas? Aye. Great. This item is adopted and approved. Madam Chair, can we move this forward forthwith? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, colleagues, we're now moving on to oral reports. Uh, we'll start with number seven, which is a status update on major upcoming street improvement projects by the Bureau of Street Services. And I don't know who's here. Mr. Sal Almeida, we'll have him turn on his video cam really quick. There he is. Okay, Mr. Almeida, please tell us the status on our street improvement projects. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair Garcia, President Pro Temp, Dr. Davis, Commissioners, Bureau Representatives, and Dr. Campos. My name is Saul Almeida, Acting Superintendent with Street Renewal Division of Streets Los Angeles. This information is being provided to keep the public informed on upcoming resurfacing projects and to minimize the impact on the community as well as delays to the commuters. Streets Los Angeles would like to provide with you an update on all major upcoming street improvement projects. There are no major street, uh, street projects scheduled in metro or valley resurfacing regions during the week of February 27th through March 5th. However, I will provide an update on our 21-22 pavement preservation program during the week of February 27th through March 5th. The metro region will complete 10 projects for a total of 8.12 lane miles during the week of February 27th through March 5th, the Valley region will complete seven projects for a total of 8.6 lane miles. The press release releases were broad, broadcasted and notifications had been issued. Streets LA has coordinated with council district offices to assist with outreach to stakeholders and we coordinate with Los Angeles Department of Transportation for traffic control assistance. This information is also available on Street LA website streetsla.lacity.org or for additional information or concerns you can contact Sherard Nichols at 213-847-3200. This concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Almeida. Any questions colleagues? None for me. Hearing none. Mr. Almeida have a good weekend. Thank you for your report. Thank you madam. Uh, Moving on to item number eight. This is uh, contracts expiring within 98, 90 days. I don't have speakers, but I'm sure you have them lined up, Dr. Campos. I do, uh, Madam Chair. From the Bureau of Contract Administration, we have Marjorie Banguet. From the Bureau of Engineering, Jonathan Carroll. And from the Bureau of Sanitation, Nancy Lanton. The Bureau of Street Services, the Bureau of Street Lighting, and the Board of Public Works do not have anything to report on at this um, a portal update. Okay, no problem. All right, we'll listen to, we'll start with BCA. Oh, I see Nancy highlight it first. Marjorie, if you can just please open up your video cam. There you go, thank you. Okay, good morning, uh, commissioners and executive staff. My name is Marjorie Munguia and I'm with the Office of Wage Standards in the Bureau of Contract Administration. Um, the Bureau has 10 contracts with the following 10 contractors that will be expiring on April 10, 2022. So we have Center for Living and Learning, Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of LA, Community Partners for LA Black Worker Center, Economic Roundtable, Garment Worker Center, Imprenta Communications Group, Koreatown Immigrant Workers Alliance with Clean Car, Car Wash Campaign, uh, the Regents of the University of California, Restaurant Opportunity Center and Warehouse Worker Resource Center. 
Uh, these contractors are on the pre-qualified on-call community and business outreach consultants list for various wage standards enforcement and implementation projects that was adopted and executed by this board in April of 2019. In advance of the expiration of these 10 contracts, uh, the Office of Wage Standards is preparing to request the board's approval for an RFQ, for a request for qualifications and establish a new on-call list um, that will assist the city in various wage standards enforcement and city labor standards projects. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Monkey. Uh, any questions, colleagues, for the Bureau of Contract Administration? Hearing none, Marjorie, have a good weekend. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. All right, we'll go with uh, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, board. Uh, Jonathan Carroll, Project Boarding Control, Bureau of Engineering. Um, we, we have 10 contracts that are set to expire. Uh, the first is a um, going to be amended to be extended for two more years when it expires on uh, March 22nd and that's for FSY Architects. Uh, the remaining nine are set to expire on March 17th, and they will be uh, archived upon expiration. Uh, would you like me to read the, the, nine, the nine contractors? They're as reported in the- I think, I think you, yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, they are AECOM, formerly URS Corporation, Somas and Associates, HNTV Corporation, Mars Services Incorporated, HDR Incorporated, Cordoba Corporation, David Evans and Associates, EW Moon Incorporated, and Harris and Associates. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carroll. Is that the, the end of your report? Yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. Any questions, colleagues, to the Bureau of Engineering? Hearing none, Mr. Carroll, you are, thank you for your report and have a great weekend. Thank you, likewise. Thank you. All right, and uh, we'll finish up with you, Ms. Lantin, uh, with the Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning, commissioners. And I think I'm in the same boat with everybody else. Oh, okay. sanitation this month has 10 contracts, 10 personal services contracts expiring within 120 days. Um, nine of these contracts are with our on-call on contracts for our automation and technology projects. Um, these are our as-needed consultant services that we use for our automation master plan. So I will go ahead and read those nine contractors as well. This is with 3DI Inc., CDM Smith, CH2M Hill, Jacobs Engineering, DSCE Inc., Nth Generation Computing, Parsons Environmental and Infrastructure Group, TetraTech, Inflection Point Solutions, or IPS, and Western Engineering Inc. Um, these nine contracts are expiring April 7th, 2022. Um, our staff is currently working on a board report to present to the board to exercise the second renewal option um, for this contract and extend the contract ceiling. Um, so it allows us time to prepare a new RFQ for, to, for the services to be released. Um, and the last contract on my list uh, is with electronic Recyclers International or ERI. Um, the ERI contract expires June 2nd, 2022. Um, in January, the board did approve the second three year renewal option to this contract and amendment number two um, to extend it to 2025. Um, this will allow staff to release a new RFP and execute a new contract for um, electronic recycling. Um, that report is currently awaiting mayor and council approval. Um, and that concludes my report for this month. I'll be happy to take any questions. Great, thank you, Nancy. Any questions, colleagues? Not at all, Nancy. Thank you for your report, appreciate it, uh, and uh, have a good weekend. Thanks, you too. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, colleagues, we have reached the end of today's meeting. Um, if there's not any anything you wanna add, we can adjourn today's meeting and uh, we'll have a 10 minute break if that's okay and be back at 12 for a short management meeting. All righty. All right, this meeting is officially adjourned. All right, thank you. Thank you.